Welcome once again to the Inside LAFC Max and Vince podcast here from the Grotto. If you're watching us on the visual median, it's uh, on YouTube, on the 110 Football, as well as the LAFC account. And if you're just uh, audio purists, as we have the majority of our audience. Those audio files. Are we on vinyl yet? Well, people listen to podcasts when they drive. I did a lot of research on podcasts last couple of weeks. And people are driving more. That's why I was late. Yes. Traffic. It's back. Nature is healing. Do you know what I discovered? Yes. Okay, so obviously cars is the, is the majority of it. And then 18 to 34 is the largest. Uh, white males is far and away the most to listen. So we got to expand podcasts to all walks of life. Yeah. That... But it was like a significant number. How do they know that? Uh, <laughs> That's a great question. Are you white? What? A, it's like, yeah, I enjoy a podcast. Like, I, I have an iTunes account. I don't ever remember being like yes. white. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember doing. They that. know. They know because when you're That's when scary. you're when you're listening to podcasts, there's a camera on you from Big Brother watching, and they go, "Yep, chalk up another one." All right, wrap this up. That was terrifying. We're done. <laughs> we're out. we're out. Hey, it's it's you know things happen. Uh, it's the technological information age. So good news this week. We're in good spirits, right? Yeah, Victoria's podcasts are always much better. We uh, came in here a lot more hyped up than we were uh, last week. Last week, last week felt just so dark, and like the, well, not for me and you. You and I always see we we could see a little bit of optimism, but the incoming we were getting, man, people were hammering us. This week, they're not hammering us. They're maybe just staying back because look, it is only one win, but it was a pretty good one. It was a good win against a good team. I think Colorado's going to be there at the end. And it was a, it was a great weekend. For, and it, it may not affect us, but when LAFC does well, the podcast does well. Yeah. The club does well. Everything does well. My the psyche partners, does well. The partners do partners well. Partners do well. You know, the, the TV numbers do well. All of that is good for us. So we really want that to be. We want to be in a hat. Like in 2019 where it's another win, you're like, hey. Try. Speaking Let's of TV some. numbers. Yeah, that's another great day because we were on – we're going to have our biggest TV audience. Uh, YouTube TV was fantastic. We had our own channel on there. Yes. And I really appreciate it. It was Ma- cool having it all in one place. Yeah. And, and look, I still have YouTube TV. I really enjoy uh, the service. You can, you can, five different people can sign up. So some other folks could get in there and they're all very happy because I, I, because you foot the I bill. I foot the bill. That's what, that's what my Netflix yeah, looks like. Whoever it is. <laughs> I got to, well, I won't get into that. <laughs> uh, by the way, I still have the sticker on my leg. There it, it is. And we'll, and we'll get to hockey talk sooner or later. Hockey people, talk. People are mad that you didn't do hockey My talk My Florida Panthers week. down three games to one to the Tampa Bay Lightning. There you go. And hockey talk. Hockey talk. Connor McDavid, everyone, and the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton, Winnipeg. That's going to be a real TV winner in the United States, right? Oh, yeah. We, like we, all, the, all the networks go, can we get that game? <laughs> PGA Championship? Nah. Let's get uh, Connor McDavid. That's the only person I know from that entire – and just so people people know, when the Canadian teams are in the U.S. and we deal with this with Major League Soccer, like when I was at ESPN, we got a Toronto game. We're like, oh, because the t- they're not going to do as well. Obviously, the the big in the U.S. market, uh, no. the, on the U.S. market, because the, the Canadian market and TSN has crazy numbers. carte blanche on that game. So you know, you're you're second fiddle in a lot of ways. So it, it is what it is. We're just separated. We're it, it, we're all in the same league. There's a lot of lines getting blurred between us and Canada. Uh, certainly in the sports world, but that's what happens. So you, your your numbers are going to be comp- considerably better mm-hmm. when there are American teams. Um, so where was I? But back to KCOP when KCOP. you're the only game in town for LAFC. And I had serious FOMO because the people that maybe didn't know, I had three wisdom teeth out uh, the day of the game. You announced it on social media. I did announce it on social media. You were media. looking for sympathy. No, I was not. I Did you notice that I took a photograph when all of our when you were on TV, Heath was on TV, Rogo, Katya, I was trying to pump you guys up and remind people that if you're like me and have FOMO, you can watch. I Look, I don't even work for the club, and I'm still promoting the club. Do yeah. you see what an asset I am? Yes. Do you see what an asset I am? There's any photos with, like, uh, cotton swabs in your mouth holding back the— No, so— here's, <laughs> here's the only, yes. You sound, like, fine to me. Everyone wanted tape— Was it painful? So here's what happened. I got out. So Cody told me this because I didn't remember. She said that I got out, and I looked at the clock because my appointment was at 11.30. And I said, hey, it's 12.30. She goes, yeah. I go, did you make sure they took all the teeth out? She goes, what are you talking about? Of course they did. I was like, it doesn't hurt. I feel totally fine. I think they did not do it. And I kept hammering her <laughs> to ask to ask the doctor. She's like, we're already gone. Vince, we're about to pull into the house. So I guess they did a good job. Do you have any of the teeth with you right now? No, I don't know. No one told me anything. 
I don't know this what's is, going this on. This has got an issue because when I my appendix burst and I told the doctor after after I got off the anesthetic. Your appendix burst too. Yes. Mine too. When I was it, kid. It's it. I thankfully didn't burst because I'm so. I'm always like, oh no, I'm fine. And if it completely bursts, I'm pretty sure I would be. Mine. Not here right now. As they pulled it it's, out, it, uh, it leaked a little perforated. bit. Perforated. Yes. Same. Said. So it was leaking. Yep. But I told the doctor after I came out of the anesthesia, may I have the appendix? He goes, no, we, we can't give that to you. And I said, wait a minute. We're, my property. I should have signed for it. I want it. I wanted a little jar of formaldehyde, and I want it on my <laughs> mantle at home. How dare you throw that away? Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, they go, we have some photos if you want to see. And I go, that is really revolting, but I want it. Yeah. It's mine. But go find it. Yes. It's my property. <laughs> So it was fantastic for me to be there. In that thing. And uh, Katya, if you haven't seen the Carlos Vela interview, uh, fantastic. Fan- fantastic work there. And uh, Heath, I got heat with Heath. I'll why? talk to you about him. He's going to join us in a little bit. But why? Are, you, are we going to talk it out with him? Should I talk it out? No, let's talk it out with him. It'll be okay. much more fun. It's about let's how, keep it, let's how keep you it dress hot. for uh, uh, but you know. You didn't like his Pee Wee Herman out. No, I liked it, but there, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll, okay. I, he looked great, but that's the issue. Well, how was it? So that was the most people in the building in over a year. 10,400. Uh, obviously, it was a good game. I mean, I wasn't there, Max. I, the broadcast was great. Field looked great, under the lights. And, you know, Bob Bradley, when we talked to him, he goes, oh, night game. He loves it. And you could see why. Mm-hmm. Um, it was – it is still – People are getting into it. The nor- uh, and I said on the broadcast how the, the 3252, which is about 1,000 folks out there, if that, um, they have to do the cheering for the empty seats. So it's a big job, but they were fantastic. And you see the creation of the call to arms and the Jump for LA Football Club. And there was uh, applause from the – I think it was for the 32. There was applause from the stadium at the end about getting it going. So uh, there were some fireworks going on on the outside. There were fireworks going on all over the Southland. Yeah. I mean, we saw stuff in Huntington Beach, which was bananas. But there oh, was don't even get me started. There was an early start. Don't even get me started on Memorial that. Day weekend next weekend, so we're here. The summer's right. here, and the- just let Huntington Beach secede to Florida already. <laughs> See you I later. saw you down there. <laughs> secede to Florida. Uh, it's it was a tremendous environment, and then the goals you were waiting. Okay, okay let's execute, and then um, Carlos Vela looked. Should we get into the game? Yeah, we might as well get into it. But fantastic, everyone, we, and this is going to grow. We, we, have, enough. we have a home game next week. Mm-hmm. Then we have the international break, and then we have two more home games. And LAFC, as a result, by winning this game, no longer in last place in the West. They're up to ninth. So what? Progress. We're, Another win, they could be in the top five. That's huh. how tight it is. Who could who could have said all this stuff uh, last week and said that you know things aren't as bad? Look, and they're not. Things aren't now perfect. Um, but who could have predicted that that's these my things take could away. happen? Yeah, of course they're Still not. Still a perfect. long way to go. Yeah, but okay. So you came in here, and the and one of the things we were talking with Manesh about was. The Carlos Carlos Manesh. Vela comes out. Manesh, Manesh, Manesh our produ- producer, since since what? Jason decides he doesn't want to be here anymore. What's this revolving producer? Manesh seems Manesh. like a good dude. He's a great. I gotta dude. meet him later. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so um, yeah, what did I say? Well, both of you talked about how they looked a little not so great when Carlos Vela came out. Granted, when your best player comes out of the game, of course. Um, I did see a little drop in form, but I would say they weren't too bad though either, being that. There was two shots on goal from Colorado. One was the goal. Another one was a good Pablo save. I, I did not see them falter as much as, I don't know, you guys seem to be a little bit more worried. I just thought it was a unique circumstance because we knew that Carlos Vela, and we said it on the air, he goes, he wasn't going to play a full game. It was going to be somewhere between 45 and 60. So obviously a conversation was had. He looked really good in the first 45. He comes out. That was good they had the conversation because in those 14 minutes officially that he played in the second half, he it was very good. Mm-hmm. Had the two corner kicks. Had that run up on the byline where he snuck in and almost created a a really good scoring opportunity. God, his balance is so good. Yeah, he looked. Yeah, he had that. That's that. It, the the jump from last week to this week was much bigger than I could have anticipated because you know you could see he looked really heavy in mm-hmm. the game against Seattle and he didn't. Oh, don't say heavy. But you know what I mean. This it, it just he wasn't that. No, I, I feel you. I come just, on, man. I like to have, come on. We're here to have fun. I'm probably still that was on, him who said that, I'm probably, not me, Carlitos. I'm probably still on some pain meds. I said don't say heavy. <laughs> Did you take what I tell you? Do not take the pain meds. Did you take them? I'm j- only on ibuprofen today because I had to drive. Good man. So uh, we knew that was going to happen, and when it happened, I think it what what the process was that he came out, and then I think there's this transition between the team going, all right, Carlos came back, looked good, and we're well. 
How do we do without him? Yeah. That's a mental thing. and they'll, they'll overcome that. It was also, now that I think about it, the Rapids who – all the games I saw from them were really enterprising. They would mm-hmm. go for it. That wasn't them this week. Well, you they also s- you mentioned in the broadcast that they had been down 2-0 before and had a comeback. So when they see Vela come out, they're like, ooh, this Correct. is the time they're heated. I would say that – they were attacking more in those last 30 minutes than they did anyway because they, were, they knew they were what they down. were up against. They were going to absorb pressure. Mm-hmm. And I thought they still did pretty well with that, and they were down the two goals. Well, when you say that they're going to overcome that, I think they did. Like, they did. That ha- it happened. Yes, there was a little drop in form. I think you get to the other side of it, you secure the three points, and I think they learned a valuable lesson about themselves. If Carlos has to come out again, will there be a little dip? Yeah, there will, but they'll know in the back of their heads they've done this before. They've been there before. Um, I don't know. That's that's my take. Look, you're gonna go. You're gonna slip down. The fact that you did not give it all the way up, to me, is a is a victory. Is well, literally a victory, <laughs> but yeah. it's it's successful in that in that regard. Um, would I have loved it if they went and just buried them, made it like five nil? Of course, but it's asking a lot. I used all my Diego Rossi hat trick information, so I figured that would make it come to pass. So, he looked like, I mean, Diego looked like a different, that whole front three. He's a, we can never say they're 100%, but after getting closer and closer, he looked it. Uh, after he missed that header? No, he had the header, and then he had another chance early on. That first um, chance in the 30 seconds in. First chance, 30 seconds in was the header, and then there was another one that was on his foot that I, I think normally he probably buries. Uh, but once he gets that first goal, I mean, that, that second goal, geez, I can't, I can't curse, but he hit the crap out of that ball. I mean, it was – Yarborough didn't know which way to dive. He just kind of looked, okay, it's in the back of the net. I mean, that was nice to see Diego back. I would say it wasn't just having Carlos back. Just the team in general was a lot sharper. Didn't you think, like, the passing was actually crisper? I think well, even the, first the percentages 30, were better. The first 30 seconds to me were exhilarating. I was like, okay, they're coming. They're, they're, they're hunting. Mm-hmm. And they are going for it. And uh, obviously that second goal was tremendous. And the ball by Carlos Vela to get assisted. The first goal now officially credited to Baird and Atuesta as assist. So all those guys that you want to see get involved in the attack Atuesta. certainly did. He's one of my players to watch on, though. The 110, uh, 110 football show player to watch. Fantastic. But I think I'm going to lose out to whoever picked Rossi. Fantastic. And it's his team at the end when Carlos comes out. And he kind of helped him stay composed and hung on to that result. It's... Uh, as saw I saw some nice passes from Kim Moon Wan, too. Yeah. One thing I, at the end of the game, when, when Bob, I mean, he went to like three guys, got his hand around. All right. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. He knows you got to strike when it's hot, you know? So, and Kim Moon Wan was one of I would have loved to have been, been there and hear what he was telling Kim after. Because just imagine, yeah. like, imparting, you know how he, he, his retention for, like, the small details in the game is unmatched. I think that's the one th- big thing that I, that I miss about Bob was, and I tell people this. Like especially the reporters that are on the post game, I'm like, he's gonna give you everything. Like he doesn't he doesn't hide when he does his little like two minutes up front. He tells you pretty much how the whole game went. Yeah. And it's funny because then people ask questions. It's like, I mean, it's not really much to ask. He kind of yeah. he kind of broke it all. There's the way always down something to ask. There's always there's always something to ask. It's always normally on the personal, but from the tactical and on the pitch side, he pretty much lays it out for you. He's like, this is what happened on this goal. This is what happened, and not just not just like two kicks and then the goal. He 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 brings it back. He's like, well, two minutes before there was this and this, and you're like. How does he – and he doesn't take Trust notes? Trust me, I respect that so much because I can't do that. Well, you see like a Jose Mourinho or even Brian Schmetzer. Take their, I always love that they have the tiniest notepad. It's like this big. <laughs> and they take their little notes. Bob takes no notes. It's, it's all I, up here. I, I've never seen him write anything down. It's all, all up here. And he, maybe, he, maybe he turns around to Ante and Mike and goes like, hey, remember this. Because he does turn around a lot to talk to those guys. So I don't, I don't know. It's a team effort. Team effort. And Kim Uguan, it was interesting that they've talked about, look, it's, it, the, the process of him adapting here is taking a little bit longer, which they have time, because I don't think he was ever going to be the starting right back from the jump. Tristan's doing a great job there, so they have time, and they're going to take it slow. And he's, but you see what, what he's capable of. He can just fly up that right side. It's just those connection things we talked about it last week. The bench, uh, there was a Las Vegas Lights game the same night, so they had mm-hmm. to, their bench was a little shortened. Yeah. With some, which, you know, uh, nice to bring Latif off the bench, though. Latif off the bench is fantastic. He came in the 75th minute with Kim Moon-Hwan. Danny Masovsky came in the 59th minute for Carlos Vela, Marcos Farfan in the 86th. So uh, these, res- these games, and certainly when we get to the thick of the season with midweek games, the bench has to be really flourishing. We have to see how far it goes with regards to uh, everyone being 100%. Right. Yeah, I mean – to your point, Kim's got a lot to learn. Um, and it th- God, we, we, did we 
like telegraph, we forecast everything because I think I remember us, us both saying that more, more important than Kim being on the field was the fact that he needs more training sessions because training sessions are, are how he's going to get to get on the field more. I mean, he still can only put in about 30 minutes of work. Um, so each time he's building up to that level. Uh, Carlos was the same way. You know, you get your 15, then he gets his 60. I would guess he can go 90 if he has to. I would say Kim can probably go 45, but there's so much to learn on that training field because fullback's a really tough position to play in this uh, LAFC system because you don't just run up and down the touchline. You've got to you've got to know when to come inside. You got to know when to be narrow, especially if Kim's going to play on that side when eventually with Carlos. You have to know how that interplay between him and Carlos works. Exactly, and we saw that in the Seattle game where you had an opportunity where those two could exchange, and that'll certainly come. And that communication is a big part. Chicky, solid return. Solid. Should, Solid. Didn't get his didn't get his footwork right on that on that goal. That's look, that's gonna happen sometimes. That that's a tough one. Um he's kinda he's turning his hips, feels a little wet. They like to feel a little wet, slips, it is what it is. Uh other than that though, I thought on the ball he was much better because he was much cleaner. Everyone was much cleaner on the ball. The passes were crisper, they were sharper. Um it's what allowed them to have better movement. And I think that was one of my my big notes was those two goals, they're able to move in coordination because the passes are to the right foot. They're at the right time. They're at the right pace. Um, it didn't look like guys standing around so much because the passes were hitting their marks and they were able to move. That's a great point, but it looked like a well-oiled machine by mm -hmm. and large. It was fantastic. Sifu, remember the play with uh, Diego Rubio where he did that swim move? And it was a, it was a foul. Yeah. I mean, but he's kind of getting that momentum to go through, and I was a little I was like frustrated when I saw the replay. Go, it's a foul. you got to call that. Yeah. But, I mean, you're this close, and he was off. I, it looked – it it – when you first saw it and you, you thought, ooh, did he elbow that guy? I was like, it did look like he – and then we saw it. We're like, eh. A lot of, actually, a lot of MLS games I watched this weekend, somebody put their hand in someone's face and got a yellow card. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Diego that, Rubio, he's a little he was a chappy all game, oh, right? Oh, boy. Oh, the speaking of that, we had Pablo Cisniega kind of get after it a little bit. Who I else like that. did it? Someone else. Pablo. Eddie was upset at certain yes. points. I mean, Diego Rubio was just in everybody's oh, ear that, God, that would listen. You know – but it works. I think because two takeaways were the, I thought the mentality was good. At, to, to be able to hold on to that lead and win that game when Vela goes out, I thought that was good enough. Uh, the passing was much sharper. That, that's what I, like you said, well-oiled machine. The third one for me was set pieces were very good. Like that Colorado team is very good. And Diego Rubio is someone. they gave that, up a lot of set pieces. And yep. they're, they're, defensively, they held their own. There's a couple close calls. But nothing where you're like, woof. Well, you just saw Rubio. He's like, I got to get another set piece. I got to get – like he was – because he wasn't very good in that game. Right, and they got more free kicks than corner kicks. Then the LAFC got the corner kicks, and DA, uh, Carlos Vela had his two or three where his delivery was perfect. Fantastic. And it just requires, a, you know, a little positioning, and you have a goal there. And then Atuesta comes in, and this is a good development where you have the left foot, the right foot on these set pieces where both are very capable. Both have had great moments on – corner kicks and set pieces in general. So I think that is something that LAFC is going to get even better at, and the goals are going to come. And the defense is better because remember last year it was wide open there. You're like, yep. whoa, you could see it coming. Here, we did give up a goal off a corner kick last week to the Sounders, but that's it. as I said here, I go, the best way to defend them is not to concede the set pieces. They did, and they held on. Of course. I mean, of course it is, right? The oh, wait a minute. You're saying, uh, is it my basic commentary? No, no, I'm no. Hey, no. whoever this is. By the way, this game, this game, whoever scored the most goals, somewhere. whoever scored the most goals was going to win this game. <laughs> sorry. I'm just obvious commentary. Ah, oh, classic Max. Don't no, give no, up. I'm sorry. I'm so, I I'm only saying that is because a lot of people were saying that LFC were bad at set pieces, and I was like, well, we only given up one, maybe half one, if you consider this that, year. They're this year, yeah, only one. And if you consider maybe one and a half, if if that first Chicharito goal, because technically that's in like the second phase of uh, of a set piece when she when Sifu can't get out it goes right back in you don't get out of your box in time uh, but they've been pretty good last year I will concede they were bad yeah very bad it was startling and a lot of times on that second phase because they would get the first header and then people would be like well I guess we're done here no man <laughs> you gotta you gotta go the extra mile that's where and the I, second phase balls were well you and Heath, danger, yeah. you and Heath on the broadcast talked about it and Warren before that it's like it's a mentality I mean it really is you're like we are not absolutely not conceding obviously you got to train them Teams don't train set pieces as much as maybe they should. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it is a mentality where you say, we're not, we're not going to concede. We're going to be first to the ball. It's not about man marking versus zonal marking. It's about just being there and attacking the ball, knowing your, knowing your role and then attacking the ball.
it's a, it's a good development. There's a lot to be happy about with regards to this LAFC performance. And the three points against a good team, certainly by and large, at the top of that list. And no longer on the bottom. No longer on the bottom. And now you have this game against New- – we can, we can talk a little New York City FC now. You have this game at home where if you win it, you will be in the top half of the standings again pretty firmly. And then you can really build towards what's going on and see what happens as we get towards the summer and that next window, and the next marketplace. We spoke to John Thorrington a little bit there. And, you know, they're going to they're looking and they're going to be looking for ways to get make this team better. That's no real secret. Can we put it out there? They're never not. looking. They're never not looking. I know the fans are like, if they're not doing anything, they're not looking. Trust me. They're always looking. Yeah, so I, I would I would be stunned if you didn't see some sort of uh, addition. There will be movement. There will be movement, and we'll see which direction it goes because we we've talked about we spoke with the Warren Barton. They go experience and something they'll do, and then the Brian Rodriguez loan will will end down. We were talked about we're all Brian Rodriguez fans because you want him to get promoted with Almeria because that opens up possibilities uh, for a club that may want to may want to get him full time. It makes the math a lot easier. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. A lot easier. I mean, again, we've, we've talked about it. Is the Copa America still going to happen? I don't know. It's going to uh, happen. I mean, it's gonna, it looks like they're going to push it If it hasn't through. been killed yet, right. it's so, going to happen. It has survived. Teams being pulled out. Australian Cutter said we're not going. It has survived the pandemic. It has survived travel bans. And now uh, social unrest in Colombia, it has just said we're not going to have it in Colombia. We're going to do it in Argentina. Which is probably the right call. And it sounds like all these – Big stars are going there. Yeah. So just to the point, to hammer the point home, Val Maria makes it forced buyback, or for, not buyback, forced buy clause. Like I said, the math just gets a little bit easier. If they don't, he comes back, but then he probably goes to Copa America, and then there's some movement. So, and that's but, what they said, because look, he's going to look really good here by the end of the summer because he's yeah. going to be part of the Uruguayan national team, and that's part of the appeal. That's why LFC wanted to get him, and that's why other clubs yeah. have been uh, – uh, tracking him and regardless we knew LAFC's incomings were probably going to be in that secondary window which is only closes in June opens back up in July it's a month and by the way two weeks of that month of June you're off what do you think about that it seems like it happened really quickly but it ha- it's good but it, that we're honoring these international windows because everyone's off yeah because there's so many internet there's so many players that we know are going to be involved and all these tournaments are now happening all at once I want to see the best players play for my my club team I also want to see them play for their national teams give them the break I mean play Man, players get run ragged. They play so many games in a year. I mean, you know, you, you see guys like remember, – remember a couple of years ago we, you have like the big messy tours and he's supposed to come to the U.S. and everyone's getting mad because he's not going to play. And then you realize the dude has played 65 high leverage games in the season and now has to travel around the world just to, just to play in these friendlies. Like these players get run ragged. And so I, I, they need I, to have I, I don't get it. Look, it's – then I see, all right. All these folks making tournaments. Hey, we're new to the Super League. Okay, more work, more tournaments for the players, more games. Less, not any more money though. And then less, and then FIFA comes in. We're gonna do a world. We want to do a World Cup every two years. I'm like, great. Why did you confer with the players? Absolutely, it's not. getting out of control. Yes, and the players need to maybe voice. Remember, players in this world are not like how we have in the United States, where there's unions. players' unions, uh, NFLPA, the NBA, PA, these player associations that protect them. They don't have that. And it'll require someone stepping up. It'll probably take a lot of guys to step up and say, "Look, we're we're not on with this. We're not gonna we're not gonna participate in this because you guys are not you don't care about us. Right? You just throw these fixtures and expect us to show up. But they all they always show up. Well, since we're into world football, should we? Do you want to talk? Did a lot happen this weekend. Do you want to put a bow on MLS real quick? Okay, put a so bow. So New on York ML- City FC next week. Yep. Uh, they're not. They're in a bit of flux. They didn't really do well this weekend. Yeah, those, Had a lead, those lost two, to, two free kick goals when it looks like you're cruising against Columbus, tough tough to handle, tough pill to swallow. I think they'll be a better team by season's end. They just made this huge signing of Tyus Magno, this Who Brazilian seen. wonder kid I've seen is, is really good. and But it's a, it's a, that's going to be a, a, a project right. to keep going. He should be available, yeah. though, for this weekend, although we'll see how much he actually plays. Still miss Alex Ring big time. Yeah, we'd like to have him back probably, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, so he's and obviously at Austin. So this is one of Mer- two Eastern Conference teams. LAC Maxi Morales, maybe not the healthiest. No, they didn't play anymore. Didn't play. So uh, Jesus Medina has been better. Uh, he's a player that I actually kind of like, but he's so hit or miss. Uh, Tati, a, Tati Castellanos has been Tati their, Castellanos probably their has been best their guy. Uh, it is going to be on Saturday, and it is 2 p.m. 2 p.m. On we're, we're, Dulene. Yes, 
And where, where it is that uh, if These you have a ticket, games. if you have a ticket to that game, you may be able to watch Champions League game. Don't on this big screen there. Possible. Very cool. Don't don't totally quote me on that, but maybe keep an eye out. So you don't have to miss anything. You can already be in your seat. Check it all out for all you Chelsea and uh, Man City fans. Yes, all of you, and the the neutrals. All very three. Welcome. Of, all three of you. All three. <laughs> there's, pl- there's plenty of them. So this is a game LAFC should win. I think, and then set themselves in good shape. doesn't mean they're going to win. And again, the two Eastern Conference teams, they play New York City, FC, and Atlanta. I think at the beginning of the year, you're like, mm-hmm. that's tough. Yep. We would like to play. And Grant, you'd like to play Cincinnati. This is for the TV and, and the, the broadcast partners. That's not, it's not a terrible pair of teams to get. This is not I – would, I would, there's other cl- clubs in the East I would avoid uh, before that. Yeah, I'm glad we don't have to play Philly this year. Yep. Uh, Toronto. We got we got, Toronto. we got a whole lot of New England in the preseason. They're a pretty good team. That's a good good Columbus, matchup. which it hasn't started well, but Columbus but. hasn't started well. But you just don't like playing against them because they they know they're it, they're almost like a Seattle esque. They know their role so well, and they they sit back and they just kind of it's like a million little cuts, and you're just like, oh god, can you guys do something? It's crazy. You get the and those will be our Eastern Conference opponents if this kind of schedule holds up for the foreseeable future. They want the New York, L. A. It makes sense. But uh, imagine some of the offices. Why don't you guys get uh, Montreal? I <laughs> know. <laughs> no, not a chance. Not a chance. So that's going to be a good way. But again, early game, which after that, what we saw at night where that field looks fast and it's, it's yep. so exciting. It looks like it is. Uh, we'll, we'll have to go back to this. And this is going to be the situation LFC are in a lot of national games. The only thing that's going to drive me crazy is the shadows. Yeah. I really don't like the shadows. And at 2 o'clock, by, by halftime, there's going to be a good shadow across at least half the field. The only thing is that for me is I promised the wife we're going Friday up to uh, Solvang and we're going to be driving back Saturday morning straight to the game. Ooh. She's going to drop me off and I'm going to Uber home from there afterwards. Oh, so we're going to party. That, I'm not Ubering from Solvang. I'm over, Uber, uh, Ubering from Bank of California Stadium. Right. To home. To home. You're not making it home. Yes. So now let's talk real quickly about what's happening in the world. Uh, Crazy. By the way, my Twitter handle, this is not games from around the world, but my Twitter handle, I'm trying to watch games. And everyone I follow is tweeting about Eurovision. Oh, can we talk about Eurovision? I watched a little bit. Look, that's, that's going to be on NBC Network b- before too long. It's going to be a massive hit in the United I've States. Never, I've never cared about Eurovision, but I'm now 100% in because I've never been so proud of Italy because that's a, that's a rock band, I man. Did, yeah, well, I, I didn't watch them. I, I got stuck watching the Iceland group, and I go, look, and if, if Europeans are going to call Americans weird and strange, you've lost all uh, – you've lost all – the side of that conversation is dead as dead as a doorknob. Yeah. You guys are just as weird. I just love seeing a band from Italy. I mean, is Italy the last bastion of rock and roll? Because I, lo- I love m- – one of my favorite bands is Judah, who's a great kind of glam rock band. Um, they're very working class, though. They're from Rome. Um, they were, you know, just – All I know is Eros Ramazzotti. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying that this Italian band looks like The Darkness 2.0. Um, and the, the song is Ziti e Buoni. Which is, I better means, watch it now. Which means uh, shut up and behave. Whoa! They brought it. They're all like they're all like 21 years old. I'll have to watch their performance. I didn't see, it, but Incredible. it's obviously a great production. Lots of cat suits and lots of lots of eyeliner and eyeshadow. That's yes. all. That's I all saw I the say. end where they won because I saw the clip. So yeah. congratulations, Italy. But it's about Ukraine. Time. What? That's what I saw. You guys, what's going on? Why couldn't, these they get interpretations? Will, why couldn't they get Will Ferrell in there to just rehash his character from <laughs> what, was, what was the song in the movie? I don't remember. Play, <laughs> play <laughs> Rookie Suki, yeah, yeah. whatever it was. So uh, the end of the European calendar, which I'm relieved because now all it's going to be massive summer with all these tournaments. No, there's no other ter- What do you mean? It's just all MLS. Euros no, there's no MLS. Cares. There is Euros. the Euros, which Copa, is in a couple weeks. Gold Cup. Nations League. Nations League. Gold Cup. Olympics. Copa America. World Cup qualifying. I'm not watching it. Olympics, not watching it. I was only reminded, I can't remember what I was watching last night. It's like, home of the Olympics. And I was like, oh, wow, I forgot they're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> These Olympics are going to be strange. Yeah, they are. I wonder if this is a, the Olympics are sustainable in the next 20 years. They are if you're an Olympic organizer and you get a chunk of yeah, that Yeah, but cash. how many <laughs> cities are going to go there? L.A.? No, I mean, look. How many cities are going to go? Well, let's, not, let's not get into we're all We're not building a let's, velodrome. Yeah, let's not get into all this, but like you, no? you want it. This is a good conversation. Well, no, because you look, Olympics, World Cups, it's all the same. You want to take this to, uh, to places that don't normally get to see it, but man, all the money just gets sucked out of these, you know, Brazil. Yeah, all that Brazil's money got sucked like, out of there. I mean, really, these should only be happening in places that already have the infrastructure like the United States, but then what's the point? What's the point if it's the same? USA, London. No. Yeah, let's leave it at that. So we'll leave it at that. So the leagues ended. It was pretty 
there was nothing at the top it, except it in Spain. With, it ended with chalk, pretty much, right? Like the top four in England, what you expected. The, the top cre- four in Italy, pretty much yeah. what you expected. But it was a crazy weekend. So it was, as Macho Man Savage used to say, the cream rises to the top. Do you remember Mando Macho Man Savage? Of course. Of course. The cream rises. I don't know if you're on. Oh, yeah. That's a pretty good impression. I wish you had the glasses, Sometimes too. Sometimes I can't even understand myself, but I'm coming to get you. Snap it to a Slim Jim. Yep. Greatest celebrity endorser of all time. Fantastic. So the cream rose to the top, and I was like kind of chuckling because, you know, the broadcast part. The so the champions, with, they had to be lap, doing backflips. But did the cream rise to the top, or was it the, it was the lower teams that forced? Verona. Verona helped got, out. Whoa, well, Napoli. That's a huge mess up. They were so impressive in the last few weeks. They were blowing people out, and then they tie it home you know, to Verona. What was crazy to me was leading up to this, two months ago, we were talking about, not we, probably only me, because I'm like the only one that watches Serie A around here. Uh, Gennaro Gattuso. They're like, who's going to replace him? I'm like, they're on fire. Why would you? And now it's like, no, no, he's for sure done. Like, he blew it on the final game. Hellas Verona just couldn't. I mean, Hellas played out of their minds. Uh, and then in England, you have Gareth Bale, who decides to wake up. And, to, and play a game and, and knock out Leicester from their spot. It's like, what happened this weekend? The lower teams just decided to act some of these some of these dream dream stories. For from what I'm hearing, the Leicester fans they're quite content because they want the FA Cup. And would you rather have finished fourth, lost the FA Cup, or oh, what happened? I, I think if I'm Leicester, case, I take a trophy. I take a trophy, and look, I, the cup competitions that's very special in England. They're, they're, I think it's more trophies are special. They're tr- they're very special, but they're they're heavier. Certainly, the FA Cup in England than the Coppa Italia. I don't want to be insensitive here. Manesh is doing an awesome awesome job producing. I haven't. He hasn't said a word to me Le- the whole time. Le- Leicester. He Lester, said it's a long Uber. Leicester book. never. Leicester never has never won an FA Cup until this year. So for them, I think that's you know important. you don't get a trophy for fourth place, Arsenal. You lose a lot of money by not making the Champions League. However, the Champions League, as a West Ham fan, I'm glad we didn't qualify. We were very close at the end because it could just sabotage the, the development of what you're doing. Leicester are on a great trajectory. They're developing young players. They're getting yeah. new players. They're no way selling to, players. No way does West Ham have the depth. Oh, West Ham would have got obliterated, League. and then they would probably be fighting for relegation by mm-hmm. season's end. So I'm glad that didn't happen. And for by them. the way, Europa League, best trophy, best-looking trophy. That's such a cool trophy. It is. It looks like a, it looks like it has it could easily get dented. I mean that's kind of its style. Yeah. The funny thing is everyone makes fun of Europa League. No one no one hated it when it's called UEFA Cup. Is it just the name? UEFA Cup. But the trophy looks fantastic. I called many UEFA Cup finals in my uh Yeah, what was your favorite in, one? Uh, Liverpool Alaves, which uh-huh. was five four. Ooh. And then When was that was like two thousand and eight? No, it was like much earlier. And earlier. then there was also Was that two thousand five? Porto Celtic. Okay. Where it was Jose Mourinho, great game. And at halftime, this guy walked onto the field dressed as a referee. No one ever knew. <laughs> walked on the field as a referee, <laughs> and then with one tug, he grabs his shirt and pulls it, and then he's completely naked. And I'm like sitting there going, "Oh my God, referee! It's not. It's, if it's the referee, he just took all his clothes off and then he runs off." I wish it was. It was hilarious. Just couldn't take the pressure. And ah. like, Henrik Larson of Celtics, I like, watch him run by. He goes, "What just happened?" So, and then we got back into the game. So that was very good. Ooh, Henrik Larson. That's a blast from the past. Good yeah, player. Great. Great look. Great player. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, I think it's good for Leicester. Napoli are going to be kicking themselves because they can handle it. And then it's given Juventus, which was going to be Do in you- rebuild mode all of a sudden. New life. Hey, Ronaldo has one more year in his contract. He's going to probably stay because we've got Champions League football. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but you got, I'm a Juventus you got fan Inter and I'm Milan like, and yeah. Juventus. And then England gets Liverpool and Chelsea as opposed to Leicester. That's good for the uh, the viewers. One well, Atalanta looks great. They're gonna restock. I mean, Italy's gonna. I I don't know if they're gonna be you know like Spain when Spain used to have three teams in the semifinals, but they're gonna make some noise in the Champions League, especially if Juventus retools a little bit. I like what Milan's doing. Um, Inter Milan, if they can hold it all together and not totally implode, because uh, <laughs> they've been going bankrupt just to win the league. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's it is interesting, but yeah, Napoli. Do you think do you think Aurelio De Laurentiis has learned his lesson and maybe don't. Don't talk about firing your manager midseason. Oh no, he's going to do exactly what he always does. Getting, you know what he does? He gets in fights with players midseason about not signing contracts. I mean, you want to talk about an owner that's like totally immersed in this and maybe way too much so? Do you know what most of the fights are over with these players too? Image rights. He's fighting with his players over image rights, and then he's losing out on Champions League spots. Maybe learn a lesson. Yeah. Meanwhile, also for Juventus, I, 
uh, why did they get rid of Maurizio Sarri? I don't know. Why are they probably going to get rid of Andrea Pirlo? Yeah, he was, he, that was an awful appointment. No more uh, legacy guys in charge who have never got any coaching experience or very little coaching experience. So we were worried about the Champions League. And in the end, Juventus, Milan, Dortmund, Dortmund. Liverpool, and Chelsea all qualify. Hats off to Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp because in February I thought he was – People were saying maybe they should get fired, which is, it was just so stupid. I didn't say that, but I said maybe he just right. take a few weeks off because he was overwhelmed, uh, a loss in the family. His mother died, and then all 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 this stuff building up, and they were losing game after game, home games to yep. Fulham. And he was Brighton. wearing it. He was wearing it. Fantastic what he was able to do. Oh yeah, but it looked like a foregone conclusion. Like Liverpool was never not winning that game. Oh, that's right. The Allison header, the goal. So that turned out to be a significant play because it was very tight there. Although they they finished strong. One last thought about the final weekend and Luis Suarez. Incredible image of him on the phone after they won the title. Remember, he got free transferred by Barcelona to go to Atletico Madrid, and then he helped Atletico Madrid beat Barcelona and others to win it. He's he on got, the phone. He's in he tears. He got ridden out of town in yes. Barcelona. That's an incredible story. And I was I was on Twitter, and I put a, that image of him crying. I go, that's amazing. you got to love football. I go, like, screw him. He's a cheat. He's a racist. And I'm like... Can't, I just can't we it's why does Twitter always have to be both sides I go can't we just enjoy this moment can't or even forgive somebody I mean he yeah. probably is the person who admitted he made some mistakes well here's the thing look I'm not going to defend what he did with Patrice well, Evra I'm not gonna Patrice Evra and what he did I'm not going to defend him biting, biting Giorgio Chiellini but to your point it did happen um I hope he made amends with those people that it happened to you don't have to be Luis Suarez's best friend and, and love him, oh. but but in a in a moment that is touching and there's a little bit of emotion after what happened, yeah, I mean that's what football is all about, right? Like we're not perfect. I mean, you and well, I would be the first to, to say they want it. you to just not even pay attention. Like, listen, Ted Nugent, lunatic, but do you think I'm not going to listen to Stranglehold for the rest of my life because he's a nutter? <laughs> You're absolutely dead wrong. I will listen to that yeah. song over and over again. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, if you want to take that that super high road, most of the art that you love, the music that you love, the movies that you love, the players that you love. You're not going to love any of them. It's a goner. Yes. There's, so, not, there's not one person that I, I, I can't even think, like, who's the squeakiest clean, clean, ugh, clean person that you I could, don't know. I didn't want to. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to know him. Doing lots of, Manish saying some crazy stuff in my ear that I will not repeat on here. Oh, yeah, I bet. He said, what about Ryan Giggs? I go, no, he's not. No, he's like absolutely the worst, not. the worst person. Yeah, not a good person. Not a good person. Stole his brother's wife. Oh, yeah. So, uh. I'm happy is that for alleged? Luis Suarez. Should I say allegedly, just in case? I'm happy for Luis Suarez. I'm happy for Diego Simeone. I'm happy for the Spanish League. He's a good champion, and it ends up being a great story. And now Barcelona and Real Madrid have to pick it up. And now Real Madrid has zero players on the Spain team for the Euros. But that's like on a whole other topic. Unbelievable. Not even Sergio Ramos. Not Sergio. I, some explaining needs to be done. And they only, they're only taking 24 of their 26. So not only is he like, hey, you guys can't get into this squad. But I'm leaving two spots I'm leaving open. Two spots because you know we might play with ten if we have well, to. Well, you know Luis Enrique, no love lost between him and Real Madrid, so uh, that shouldn't be coming to the surface. That's bad. That's why Spain. I'm not touching it when I when for me. They're I think, not winning it for me. I think you take Sergio Ramos just to have somebody yeah. that you know has won uh, a Euros, then a World Cup, then a Euros. But what do I know? Unbelievable. We'll have a chat with Heath Pierce. Heath Pierce. He and was great. He was great on the call, but you've got a bone to pick with him, and I can't wait for this. I have a bone to pick with him. I'll tell you what it is, and we will talk about his perspective from the game against, I forgot who we played already. Colorado uh, Rapids. Seeing the Colorado Rapids. <laughs> this is why your retention's so good and Bob Bradley's retention. I couldn't remember we played. The Colorado Rapids. That's next on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince pod. And just like that, we're back here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince pod, and a thrill to welcome in the man who will be – viewed very fondly by history for being the first broadcaster, the first plus one for LAFC in 2021 with our new broadcast partner, KCOP. It is none other than Heath Pierce. Heath, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. A nice studio space. Looking good over there. Yeah, we got to get you up here in Burbank. And by the way, Redondo Beach to Burbank at 8 a.m., 40 minutes. Not bad. Really? 40-minute drive. Heath yeah. is like, thanks for the traffic update. <laughs> yeah, you, you had that. You had one of those uh, those uh, fake dolls in the passenger seat. To hit that, no, that no, I had the toll. I had the toll. Now, Burbank the doll is Redondo. real to him, Heath. It's real to him. <laughs> Burbank Redondo at two o'clock. Not forty minutes. Okay. Not. Yeah, when we leave, it's a little here. bit lengthier. Uh, wait, before you you said you had a bone to pick with Heath. I, I just like, before you do it, uh, we've actually nominated him into the Hall of Fame of Plus Ones uh, outfits. I hope you're not going to talk about his outfit. 
No, and he's always a winner when he comes in. He always calls victories. No, I, had a, I do have a bone to pick about your outfit. Your outfit looked amazing. You look, you look great. But I'm getting texts when I'm driving home and people saying, you couldn't dress any better on the first broadcast? And I go, look, he dressed like he was going to the Kentucky Derby and he was like in a, in a suite. And I go, I wear my standard black suit, black shoes, black hat, Cadillac. No black hat. But it's um, – What band? Uh, rancid. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I mean, I mean, I, people go, okay, here he is. I'm going to wear my outfit, and then you came in with uh, looking like a million bucks. So, what can I tell you? So, yeah, you should reconsider that next time, not to show me yeah. up. Listen, usually I wear my black and I wear a white white shirt, and I wear a black suit, and that's usually my my go to. But every time I wear a black suit with a white shirt, and I'll go the black tie or something simple. Somebody goes, uh, hey, uh, waiter, uh, can I get another drink? Like, <laughs> I don't know what, like, and now I'm the legend of Bagger Vance when, when I wear the three-piece suit. I don't know what I can wear where somebody goes, hey, man, nice outfit. Yeah. Uh, and then we just move on. Or no one says anything, you know? It's like silence is, is the best well, compliment. But I don't know which way to go now because when I wear the black suit, uh, somebody always makes, uh, makes some sort of comment. Well, you got what you want. Even Team Security Paul called me and said, wow, man. You got to bring up your game. I go, thanks a lot, Paul. Why don't you go to bed? It's 1130 at night. <laughs> and uh, you shouldn't be texting while driving. He was probably home by then. He was probably home by then. Well, should we talk about the real let's, stuff now? You go ahead. Let's talk, talk about, the, about the game. Sorry. He, the, 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 thing, the first thing that was brought up here before we even got on, and then we, we talked about it on, on air, was about Carlos Vela being subbed off. I want to ask you, because you had a lot of great stories about Bob, would that have been something that you think Bob would actually talk about in the pregame talk, saying, hey, guys, just so you know, Carlos is going to start, but I, I've got a minute's restriction on him just so that the guys, like, their head's straight. Or is that a halftime thing? What, what do you th- how do you think that went down? No, a lot of it's just building that load. So I think the whole team probably knew going into that. Obviously, him going from 20, if this was October, then maybe it's something different where you're like, let's get him for as many minutes as we can. We're playing for whatever result you're playing for or, or if it's playoffs or something like that. But this is one where generally – uh you're, you're announcing that to the team. You're saying 45 to 60. We'll see how he feels. And when you get to that 60 mark, you, you know that you want to get him out. Because you could also see by his body language. When he came off, he, that was one of his uh, faster jogs of the game uh, <laughs> without the ball. Was like kind of heading off to the sideline. Was like, you know, kind of ready to take the, te- uh, the, the band off. You could see. But he had this like pep in his step that looked like, okay, I, I survived this next phase of my my comeback and, and looked confident. So I, that's usually discussed within the team in terms of like what that load is going to be. And then you've got the uh, sports science staff. That's just wa- Hawkeyeing him the whole way through of like, how's he moving? What's his body look like? Is he, does he look confident and unlocked? And, and, um, and yeah, it, uh, it's usually pretty, pretty well known within the locker room of when somebody's going to have limited minutes. Well, my Sorry fault. if you guys can hear a baby in the background, by the way. Like, uh, I've got a baby next to me right now. It's my baby. It's my, oh, my okay, yeah, as long as it's question. your baby. <laughs> that was the yeah. next question. Uh, so I, I'm sorry. It's uh, unprofessional, but, you know. Well, can I, let me, can I just follow up real quick then? What, what was your take on it? Because we came in here, and Max and our producer, Manesh, were like, oh, they didn't look so good. And I thought, well, yeah, you, you lost your best player. Um, and, yeah, there's going to be a little dip in form. But for me, I don't know. You can tell me from a player's perspective. Just surviving it is, is what does it. I, I mean, I don't expect them to look perfect. I thought they were okay. Uh, after Carlos went off, but what was your take? Yeah, I, you know, and, and I said this in the, in the post game with with Max is is that I feel like LFC has been spoiled over the years of being to being able to play teams off the pitch, right? And they get into a situation 60th, 70th minute where literally teams have no chance. They're multiple goals up, or they're in such good rhythm and form that teams like you get to you see this with like the biggest clubs around the world where like 70 minute 70th minute hits even if it's a one goal advantage you usually see them just cruising right you don't really see this what we saw at the end of this game where Colorado just lingered on and they were just dumping it into the box they obviously had Price who can hit those long balls just looking for anything a very old school Houston or San Jose approach of just like <laughs> throw it in there we all just crash it and and go and I think surviving those things suffering together where you get out of it and you go well maybe we could have given up a goal there at the end uh, actually helps to build your confidence. You know, to be a top team in any league, you have to be able to win different kinds of ways. You're not going to just be able to, sometimes you got to grind out results and it's going to be close. And those are things that help build your confidence. So, yeah. 
Uh huh. I heard the baby. <laughs> the baby. You gave her my phone. I gave her my phone, guys. She's too young You're to fantastic. watch the phone, we, but I, she almost I, dropped it. I appreciate you. The multitasking. It's fantastic. So I, I think we all agree that it's it is a good lesson. Uh, a good practice for LAFC, but do you think there was a little dip? I thought there was just because Carlos played so well and then he left and the team must have been thinking, wow, it, it's good. We're good with Carlos. Clearly, he's going to be a real contributor when he returns. And then there was like a bit of a reaction. Maybe it was just a little mental lapse. I, again, it was a couple good looks for Colorado. It wasn't super threatening, but I know probably speaking for the fan base, they're probably in fear that if Colorado get a cheapie here and it ends 2-2, it's like, wow, back to back to the drawing board. Yeah, but again, like that would be a completely different circumstance. You'd look at this game completely different if they gave up that la <laughs> last goal, said. right? Yeah. Uh, like, but but because they didn't, you get to like It's like my first while, soccer game I've ever watched. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like winning winning while learning is is sort of it's a game of moments, right? And winning while learning is the best way to be able to reflect on this and say, you know, Bob can now say, Hey, we had this great stretch in the first half. I also don't think that it was necessarily Carlos coming off in the second half. It was the goal that happened at the beginning of the second half that shifted everything where it's just so hard to wind up again after that when you give up a goal off of nothing. You know, it's a second ball that gets not, knotted down and then in an instant, a guy's through on goal and it's just like, you go, man, this is now going to be very different than it was the first half uh, where we were playing well and connecting connecting the dots. So I think certainly oh, – now she's dropped the phone. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, certainly different, but I think Carlos Vela losing him because he just unbalanced his opponents. And the way that he was playing, again, I, I, I go back to an early moment where he just got on the ball and he was kind of doing something silly with it, had no real intent with it, but he was just drawing defenders in. He took seven, eight, nine touches, and the fans go, oh, this is amazing. He's drawing pressure. He's drawing contact. You want to see that. Um, and he just brings that level of, 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 uh, attention around him. You know, there's, mm -hmm. when you look at when he drove in on, on, on that, uh, second goal, he's just bringing so many people who drops, who stays, you have to col collapse the field. And that just brings a different type of spacing around. And when he's not there, it's just different. You can match up a little bit more, you know, when they're in a, when they were in a back four, they matched up a little bit better. They looked a little more comfortable. So I think there was a number of factors at play, uh, but it didn't. It definitely felt at times that that uh, there there was an opportunity for Colorado to 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 poach on a little vulnerability there in the second half. I'm just glad Heath's on my side. I, maybe I'm hanging out with Bob too much too. But I that's the first yeah. thing I said to Max was like, but they didn't. I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's the answer. But they didn't concede. Hey, it's and a they podcast. Won the game. We have to flesh out all these ideas. Yeah, I guess we're allowed yeah. to. Uh, I, I love I love that you bring up that point though. You you did kind of foreshadow with with Carlos uh, and his ability. Yeah, where he was just taking on four or five guys, just seeing if he could dummy a couple. Just seeing you make a few guys um, because both goals, um, the second goal, obviously he gets the direct pass to Diego, but before that he, he was able to hold off three or four guys to get it out to Mark, which kind of reset everything up for them. Um, so can you talk a little bit about like the gravity of a player? I know it's a word that's kind of, it's from the NBA, but like, it's kind of, uh, it's a new thing in soccer where certain guys just kind of, they bring guys in and just opens up the rest of the field for the team. Yeah, because he, he's got the, skill set of a 10 where you know that you can find him at any time and the the chances are high that if you dump it into him whether the pass is at his knees it's at his foot you're going to keep the ball and with every step that he has time and the ability to put his head up or whatever the game is evolving and shifting it's fluid right and things are changing and he has the ability to say okay fine if you're going to put me on my left and i've got a diagonal ball i'm just going to put it there or if you're going to take me to my right, I'm going to take that. Or it allows all of the things around it to start to, to happen. And if you look again on, on that that first goal as well, and and the second goal, the movement of the team is so much more fluid when he's on the field because you know, hey, Rossi knows if I make this little darting run, I'll probably get this ball in the right spot. Or you know, Tristan Blackman, if I'm going to make this overlap, there's a good chance that I'm either going to get this ball or I'm going to free up space for the best player in the league to do something. And you saw a couple of times where he gets it on his left foot. He's looking at that top corner. And so it just changes everything knowing that you, you I guess you decrease the risk of, 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 uh, of um, I guess you mitigate the risk of throwing more numbers forward when you have a player like that because he's not going to give you a bad turnover. Maybe once a game, he'll, ha he'll have a turnover that you got to put out a fire on. But for the most part, Players feel like they can attack more, not knowing that, like, if I leave the spot, I'm leaving the team a little exposed. And so if you saw, there was times where they had six, seven players just moving in and out of spaces. And that, I think, wasn't happening as much in the second half, where you had different guys higher up in the, in the field, and they were just interchangeable in these positions. And that's a big thing with Bob, right, is 
if one player is going to step into a new space and step into a pocket or a gap, you know, somebody has to cover for him. And then you got to get out of that gap and somebody else to have has to come in. And so that fluid movement where in transition, now you have to be able to defend from that position, right? Now you're in a pocket. You've got to say, we've lost the ball. I've got to collapse on this or I've got to press right away and not just go, oh, well, actually I'm the left winger. I'm just going to head back out there uh, to where I started. Like there is a, a fluid movement that when he's on the field, both offensively and defensively makes the game less risky for everyone in their movements. Defensively, it was uh, LAFC have been playing better all season. How did you see that? We talked about it before you joined us. The set piece defending has improved drastically since last year. In the second half, Colorado had much more possession because they were chasing the game, and LAFC were able to maintain. There were We talked about those first half balls over the top, which seemed to work for Colorado. really didn't see those in the second half, but how did you see LAFC adapt to the different things that were thrown at them by the Rapids? Yeah, I, I think, again, in the first half, some of those diagonal runs that got between the lines required just some better communication on, like, whose back line is it, right? Anytime you have a back line, it's got to be one person's. One of your center backs owns that back line. If he says drop, you drop. If he says step, you step immediately. You know that this is like the call that we're all feeding off of. When I look down that line, he's that line setter, right? So everybody else knows that if I'm not on his line, I can't, I can't do something different. Uh, and so that requires that person to own that at all times, communicating of like step, drop. And usually that person is dictating who steps, who goes over, like oh, the over communicator, so to speak, on how that line gets set. And you, you, you have to have that in, on, on every back line. Uh, and so I think there, was, there is a moment or eventually somebody's going to have to step up and own that back line to say, this is mine. I, we get scored on, it's on me. We drop and I leave them on. We leave them on side. It's on me. We step and we hold a tight line and you know one of you guys don't follow. We've got to uh, sort that out. And I'm not saying they don't have that, but you could see at times it just looked a little bit disjointed. And I think also part of that was Colorado came out in a three back line or five back, whichever way you want to call it. But let's say for the sake of the argument, three back because those wing backs were pretty high and wide, which meant that a lot of times black men. And, and, and Cheeky were stuck between two guys because there's just two guys drifting because they're playing with too high. And so it creates these gaps where you either have to shift all the way inside and give the weak side long ball, or you stay outside and you start to have a little of these gaps of who has who. And I think there was a little bit of that as well in the first half. With regard to um, the set pieces, I still think Colorado got on the end of a few set pieces that they shouldn't. And I, I always worry about zonal marking because if you're man markers – you know, again, and it's 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 a little bit of a of a of a cliche at this point, but Max, if you're sitting on the near post and it's against me, you can have six inches on me. But if I'm running and you're standing still, I'm gonna get up over you every time. All things equal, right? Mm -hmm. So they were clogging that near post, doing a good job. But then you need to be able to also, you know, zone can be very good, but you also have to be able to recognize when you've got to track a runner, when you have to get to the space, when you have to be aggressive. And I thought Colorado got on the end of a, the end of a couple corner kicks or balls from wide that that you can't deny forever. Um, inevitably, somebody is going to attack the ball that I think were were you know half chances throughout the game, uh, and and that worries me a little bit. But from wide free kicks and those types of places, you know they were aggressive and they got on the end of those. And I thought not only do they clear their lines first, but then that next that next ball they come and they clear it, and then you see that mo line moving out very quickly. So overall, pretty impressive to me. You told a great story on the broadcast about, about Bob and how he would talk about, that's a good idea, but can we have a better idea? So I want to ask you, at the end of the game, Max pointed out, Bob went right to Kim Moon Wan, and they were having like a full-on conversation. You could tell it was a full tactics conversation. Your, your relationship with Bob, what, you've, what you know about him having played for him, what do you think that conversation was about? What are those conversations like? Have you been coming off the field and you're like, hey, we just won, and then Bob kind of finds you and goes, hey, Heath, I got, I got, I got to need you for five, I, I ten gotta minutes. I got to talk to you, but no one like, else. What is that like? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you that. And again, I, I, had, I had Bob in the 2010 cycle with the national team. And so Bob, as a, as a manager, as a coach now, just like me as a person, has grown and evolved and added elements and dropped elements of his style of coaching and whatnot. But you know, in those moments, you have a chance to address something in real time right? Where you can go to the video or, and you can walk somebody through all these things and they might feel differently, but in real time, you can have a conversation about what he thinks. And I thought that there were times that, that he struggled to uh, get in the game early or find ways to be impactful uh, because he's got a ton of energy and that could be what Bob was addressing. But anytime that you have the ability to address that on the field, a learning moment, especially for the younger guys, uh, it, it contextualizes it quicker 
so that you can point out situations of like, hey, that one there. It's kind of like when a referee goes one, two, three, four like that to you and before he gives you the yellow where he's telling you mm -hmm. like, I remember all these things. <laughs> a coach can do the same thing where it's like, I want you to know these are a few examples that I remember. And when Bob goes into the locker room, like that's hard to remember, right? Not all coaches like write little tiny notes on a, on a, on a pad and you have to. So it's one of those ones where it's like, I want to address it now because you have the best chance of, of that message uh, of sinking in, but it's a great learning moment for a player like that. And, and to have a, a, a coach with the wealth of knowledge that Bob has and also to be singled out, right? This is a mentality for a player. A lot of times you go, well, you know, this guy singled me out. Why would, why would he single me out? You know, we just won. This is a big moment, like whatever. But the flip side is that he singled you out. He's noticing something about your game or he's spending enough time and energy to develop your game because of the impact that he thinks that you can have in the team. So overall, when a coach comes up to you and is positive and, and you know, Pep Guardiola does it all the time uh, where he, where he pulls a guy uh, aside, literally on the field, you see he's done it a million times with Raheem Sterling or, you know, we saw with Deli Ali before at at um, at Spurs with 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 Mourinho at times. Like these coaching moments are are a, a positive because they want to address it in real time. So yeah, not to go off topic too much, but yeah, I think you know, hopefully that answered your question. Well, I still remember Pep with uh, Joshua Kimmich. Um, they they must have had like a good twenty minute conversation, and he was so animated. And obviously, Kimmich has turned out to be pretty good. So. Yeah, it was because of that conversation. All because of that conversation. Uh, hey, yeah. we, Heath, we appreciate your time. We know you're really busy. But a quick thought about uh, just the evening and this next step where more supporters were allowed in and vaccinated areas, game under the lights, back at home for an LAFC team that really needed the result. Uh, soaking all that in and obviously working with a media titan like myself, what what comes <laughs> what comes away from well, I was that laughing experience? At you, Max. Sorry, something else. I was only laughing because Vince was laughing, and I just didn't know what to do. You know, I, know, I made you feel awkward. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was laughing too. Yeah. No. no it, look, it it was a it was a unbelievable night to me. Uh, for me personally, to to have fans back in the stadium again, and for me to be able to call a game like that was special uh, for me personally, just because the game presents itself differently, right? You don't have to create the hype. You don't have to find the flow of the game. The fans are dictated or, or at least telling you the flow of the game, right? You could hear that when it goes down, you can hear them when they get louder and to have those sections get bigger and bigger, uh, especially the vaccinated sections and the, and the safety for everyone involved. And obviously with the players now getting to a point across the league of vaccinations, where a lot of the protocols are going to be eliminated or adjusted or altered, I think is a great sign for the rest of this season. The season's still really young, but, to put out a performance like this uh, for the first half, especially, but also to grind out and get the, get three points is is a is a huge thing. And again, the fans were, you know, when Carlos came off, you could feel that presence, you know. And for a guy like that that wants to some validation after working hard to get back in into the lineup uh, and and fit, it feels good, right? And a goal and all these moments, the fans are so important for, yeah, just the overall atmosphere that it was just it was just great to see, you know, and an overall great night. Well, I got to tell you, Heath, uh, I thought your match commentary was great. I told Max, I don't know if he shared it with you, but I sent him a text right after the game. I was like, he's got to do more match commentary because that was fantastic. And I'm not just saying this because you came on the podcast. He, he can show you the text. No, no, uh, but you I told me you that great. and I repurposed it like it came from me. But I told uh, but I was going to tell that to Heath too. I go, man, you did. A, I said from the last time he broadcast the game here, it was just improvement. You could see he's working on his craft, which is a follow. It's a joint. So that came from both of us, Heath. Hey, I, I will say though that, <laughs> You know how I was just talking about uh, Kim and Juan and, and the conversation with Bob on the side of the field where you could take it two different ways. When Max said, he was like, hey, I, I thought this was your best game. I was like, well, what are you saying about the other games? <laughs> you know, that's the way I did that. Instead of me taking it, it's like, oh, this is a learning moment from a media titan. Uh, I, I took it as like, Wait, he said How I bad had was I before? last time. And now he's telling me this is my best one. What were the other ones like? You know, but no, it's OK. Let me but, rephrase. Let well, me rephrase. Yeah. My, you com my you comment was... You've arrived. You have arrived as a, uh, a top-tier analyst. And my comment was, you need to do it more. I need more match commentary from Heath Pierce. I feel terrible. I, I, I would love to, but it's, you know, the, the media titan over there holds the cards. And, you know, he, he only wants me in, in small doses. But, no, look, I, I, I Max puts me in really great spots. Uh, it helps that the way that LAFC rolls out a pregame, a postgame, it really sets the to a lot of teams don't do that. A lot of teams yeah. are like on the air, you get five minutes, maybe you turn to the camera in the booth and you're like, Hey, we welcome you into whatever stadium. Uh, 
you take that with the atmosphere and what the club has built and the and and their dedication to uh, putting on uh, a good broadcast, which will now be in front of more eyeballs um, with the new television partner. I just think that that makes for a much better show for me, right? I get to spend time. I'm there for half the day uh, or a full day, basically with 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 the entire team. And yeah, it's 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 one of the most professional setups uh, within the league. And so it makes it easy for me, obviously working with a veteran like Max makes it easy for me because he puts me into good spots, except for when he goes down any sort of musical reference route that I don't understand <laughs> or, or says the ball brothers. We're all with uh, you. On, We're all with you on, on that. And, and I was like, you know, I was so, I told Max after at, I think it was at halftime where I was like, Max, I don't, I didn't, in real time, I didn't know who the Ball Brothers were. I didn't know if they were, they could be LAFC owners and like, LaMelo. The new, yeah, well, I get it now, but like, <laughs> then I was like, dude, this could have been something good or bad. Like when people talk about Modesto, California, they think about the, you know, some really bad stuff that's happened there. Uh, and so I think of Heath Pierce. Like, yeah. Well, a lot of people think of the, the, the Peterson murders, but like you think of Heath Pierce. So I, I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, but my, my, my point is, is that like, in real time, I was like, I think I just need to leave this because what if I get it wrong? What if I go, who is that? And he's like, you don't know. And then it's like, yeah. uh, so I just, I just left that alone. But anyways, I'm, I'm on a little bit of a, a tangent, but yeah, look, it's really, I, I appreciate the compliment. You know, I, 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 I do, I love doing broadcast. I love doing media stuff. Uh, you know, I love. You can tell, by the way, you can tell you really enjoy yourself, which is a huge plus. Yeah. And, and it's just fun. And again, to, it's so much easier. We've all done games. We've all done stuff where, you know, I did Red Bull New York games, the second team games back in the day, right? And I was just trying to get reps and trying to get reps. But the stadium is empty. You've got first team players going to the to the second team. You've got 16-year-olds who, like, you're talking about, well, you know, his favorite dinner is uh, macaroni and cheese that he has with his. <laughs> and and you, learn, you learn the hard way, and you learn to have to find things to talk about. But with LAFC, again, it's it's spoiled right? You have atmosphere. Thank you. I'm glad that it's back. You have a, a professional team. You have a professional broadcast uh, and in, in a city that cares that it makes all of it like the, if the last thing I have to do is just talk, talk about the game, like that's pretty easy. Uh, not easy, I, but like it's, 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 you know, it's fun to do is what I'm trying to say. Excellent perspective about how fortunate we really are here and how blessed we are. And Anytime, Heath, you bring a, a, a lot to our broadcast, and we appreciate it. Plus, I mean, people forget Heath Pierce was a, was a baller. This is a, a great what do you mean? player. He, he puts out that gif every other week of him. Uh, who, who is it that you took down the left side that you dominated? Oh, uh, Danny Cruz. Danny, Danny Cruz. Cruz. Can, I just, yeah. can I just say after the first move, though, you should have crossed the ball? <laughs> oh, I agree. It's funny because I, I learned that move because I would go at somebody and I'd step over it. But I wasn't really ready to go to the end line. So I'd run over the ball, and then I realized, oh, they're going to run with me, so it's going to give me a little bit of time to, to, to actually put my head up because, sorry, there's things floating around in my, in my uh, place now. But, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was a fun move. And the cross also, I, I've tried to reach out to anyone who's reposting these videos to be like, most of them have been clipped now to where you don't see the cross Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, look, in and one mixtape era, you pick up the ball, you hand it to the guy, you know. The cross doesn't matter anything. The fans are supposed to jump over the wall and come onto the field and swarm like Rucker Park style when somebody falls down on a move. You're not supposed to play that play Whoa! out. So <laughs> yeah. oh, if you would have done that, would have been incredible. Oh, endless snap! moment of all time. Take the yellow card to pick the ball up and hand it to him. Oh, um, easy. Yeah. But that's why when Max said the ball brothers and he says I'm a baller, I thought maybe he was talking about me, but he was talking about uh, <laughs> LaMelo uh, Ball. Lamelo and Lamar and, and Lev uh, Lamar and Le Lavard's the dad. Who's the other? Yeah. Leangelo. Leangelo, who didn't make the NBA. Yeah, he's he's like the Peyton. He's the Manning brother that didn't make oh, it. Geez. Cooper or whatever. Cooper Manning. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> wow. You know the Mannings, the right? Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware. I'm the mayor. If you were like the Manning brothers, I'd be like, not okay. from Chino, California. Yeah. Yeah, not from Chino, yeah. but fair. But I appreciate you guys having me on. This is a really fun fun conversation, and uh, it sure is. Great. You know, we talk about professional setups. This is this is peak. Yeah, we got to show know? you around here. We're yeah. thr I'm thrilled we'll, we'll about it. We have fantastic. to have you in once once ev you know once everything gets really back to normal. We'll yeah, have we have two more chairs. Place. Yeah, we got lots of chairs, lots of room. Got some crafty, you know, some water bottles. You'll be it'll be great. Yes, love it. Heath Pierce, everyone. Uh, I'm a plus one this past week, and he'll be back again here later this season. We're out of time here on the Inside LAFC Max and Vince podcast. As we always like to gently remind you, subscribe, uh, leave us a uh, a rating, a review. We welcome it. And we 
we enjoy the dialogue with you guys because after all, this is your part of this podcast. So thank you very much, and we'll join you next week to recap New York City FC and get you ready for the international break. <laughs>